Anyway, so we're here for a quick update of the uh, news from Avid on the latest NAB 2016, okay? So, first things, you're already familiar, I guess, with Avid, so... <laughs> Uh, you already know that we have a lot of product and uh, as we call it, some uh, product you are really familiar with, like Pro Tools, Media Composer, on the, let's say, workgroup uh, part, like Interplay, iNews, our shared storage system, ISIS, okay? Now this is real, let's say, our regular portfolio product. But right now we are more or less really a platform company. We are really transforming ourselves as Ivy as a really platform company. Uh, that's why <laughs> I've got this beautiful CD, like Transformers, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I will keep the jokes. <laughs> so, <laughs> we have built the, uh, what we call the Avid Media Central platform, okay? This is really, we are moving from products and silo uh, really to a uh, complete overall our platform, okay? This platform that we have already maybe see it. Uh, this is the Avid Media Central Platform. We have uh, beginning, in fact, our <laughs> transformation. Uh, this is what the DVD was done for. Anyway, so in 2013, so this is the first review of the Avid Media Central Platform when we uh, built this idea of a centralized platform and uh, everybody is looking at it and say, what are you keeping? Uh, dropping down Pro Tools or Media Composer or Share Storage. I don't get the idea. Okay, so we developed the platform and in fact, this year, in 2016, this is really the first big step for the transformation of Avid as a really media central platform company. Why? Because at, at this NAB, So, I don't know if you get the idea, but this is the first time we have plenty of, let's say, integrator or partner, in fact, building some integration around our platform. So this is mainly competitors, by the way, or other companies, and they have been developed years after years, plenty, plenty of, uh, let's say, connectors for integrating maybe shared storage system, like, I don't know, uh, object matrix, for example, or let's say some glue for putting some camera stuff, and uh, like also Root6, which was one of the first to believe, let's say, in, inside the Avid Media Central platform, to build some connectors. But other vendors in the world are making connectors. That's not the, the point of Avid. Our point is really to make, a, let's say, an operating system for creating the media. Okay, what we try to do is to say to everybody, hey, this is our end, take it, we give us, um, we give you, sorry, uh, our connectivity toolkit, I say all the API, all the SDK, and you can develop whatever you like to, to connect to the platform. What is the main idea? It's to say, we have, you, you have, or you customer are using other product and you're spending a lot of money trying to uh, get these things done and working together, okay? But now we are introducing the Avid Media Central platform and in fact, we are in the process of certifying, in fact, all the connector, all the, let's say, uh, competitors, like to, or all the company or all the developers that like to develop something, uh, could be certified by Avid. Meaning that we, uh, we n n just n uh, say that n it's j not saying it's working with, we, uh, we, sorry, <laughs> as Avid, we say it's working and we certify it. So we have built the, the test, the platform, and we guarantee you, as customer, dear customer, that this solution can be implemented inside your complete workflow, inside the Avid Media front platform, and it will work. It will work now, and it will work for sure for tomorrow. Okay, so 
And the thing is that the, uh, this kind of connector or development uh, can be also be sales through the Avid uh, channel partner, through the Avid network, so basically on the website or through a reseller. Okay, so you can buy directly from a reseller. Okay, this connector certified. And there is sev several, let's say, uh, customer or partner or developer that have been certified right now. We have more than three, uh, no, uh, 600 connectors or partners or competitors that are developing such stuff. And we have uh, 300 waiting for being certified, in fact. So XNews is kind of a partner that have been certified. This is a way of implementing, let's say, some news uh, inside a complete news workflow. Uh, having some uh, image coming from uh, whatever, Twitter, Facebook, you name it, uh, etc. Uh, there is also some new stuff, more like connector for injecting media, but I will skip this because I prefer talking about this. <laughs> because Route 6 was really the first, uh, let's say, partner or reseller that believe inside the Avid Media platform and been Avid Certify Integrator, or let's say partner. So that's really pushing the bar further and saying you're already the partner. We believe in you, you believe in our solution, and we can build together a, a better solution for, for the need of our customer. Because your customer, you keep fighting with integrating new format, new cameras, new audio stuff, new HDR, new 4K, new monitors, and it keeps increasing the price. Okay. And to show really that we are believing in the way that we are avid transforming ourselves, we are showing that here you can see a uh, uh, Premiere Pro, okay? But this is, in fact, over there, this is the Media Central UX. So this is really an avid part inside a Premiere Pro, okay? And this is really for showing that we don't really care about the product or the edit product that you are currently using. There is no such thing at war that this is better than that and <coughs> whatsoever, okay? We know at Avid, you, know, you are need to use several products, okay? And you keep asking for better integration, okay? To show that, we develop first, let's say, the Media Central UX platform inside Premiere Pro, okay? This panel, it's not even yet in Media Composer. Okay, it's going to be at the end of the year for Media Composer, but we are developing this for Premiere Pro first for a specific customer. And now this customer can share the same media between Media Composer and Premiere Pro on different share storage system, and it's really the key. Okay. So in the center, this is actually, let's say, a small pieces of the Avid Certified Partner ready certified. The other is working also and they are waiting for being certified by us. And uh, there is a lot of work <laughs> and we have no enough, let's say, bandwidth to certify every vendor that want really to be on the platform. But this is just to show you that we are transforming ourselves and we are going to be a really platform, let's say, company Today you can build your own platform, let's say your shared storage system, your acquisition system, your edit suite, your shared storage system, your near line, your online, etc. And tomorrow you will be able to have a mix between a shared storage, in sh shared storage system sorry, inside your facilities and maybe something on the cloud. Okay, everybody is talking about the cloud. The cloud is the future, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Amazon, where's my media? I don't know, where's the security? Anyway, that's your choice. Your choose, sorry. Your choice. <laughs> Come on. That's your choice. As I did, we just want to build or help you to build a platform that is consistent and is working. So maybe in the future, in the early future, maybe next year, you will be able to have some media inside your facilities, okay, and some other inside the cloud. A private cloud or your own cloud, okay? And you won't be able to, see, to, to tell where the media is. In fact, that's the magic of the platform. Well, we will see that in the future. Anyway, when we're talking about platform, the first things you maybe have heard about it, it's Pro Tools and Pro Tools Cloud Collaboration. 
Pro Tools is really the first, let's say, product that it's cloud enabled, meaning the latest version of Pro Tools um, allow you to share projects all across the world, in fact. So two mixers can open the same session and maybe one can add a, a guitar tracks and the other one the piano tracks on the same session and be able to share it. Okay. In the middle, let's say, there is a, a cloud. Currently, we, we are using an Amazon cloud. Okay. But the same two different users can share the same project all around the world. Okay. So Pro Tools is, re is really like a laboratory <coughs> where we're trying to put stuff on the cloud, but uh, actually it's really working, but it's not really working, let's say, for professional, because professional needs more bandwidth, more tracks, more stuff, okay? But if you have only uh, 16 tracks, maybe, if you are just playing in your garage, like most, most American band do it, you can use Pro Tools collaboration in the cloud for sharing, in fact, the media. Which is great. Let's imagine if you have two Pro Tools, you don't need to have the same plugin on, the, on both sides. In fact, maybe you have two compositors. One have a huge set of plugins, because they like having plugins. The other one have, don't have the plugins. You'll be able to share the same session. There is a function called Plugin Freeze. Okay, it's like a render. I will render everything because I know that the other guy had not the plugin for playing back the session. Anyway, this is really the key point. Actually, we are running Pro Tools collaboration, but you can see that, well, you can imagine that tomorrow is going to be Media Composer collaboration and further and further and further. Okay. So it was really the first time that at we, as this NAB, we show a working Pro Tools collaboration stuff. Before that, it was only, let's say, demo stuff. Now it's working and you can buy it. As soon as you buy a, a Pro Tools, by the way, you also get the Pro Tools collaboration inside, in fact. It's just a way for putting media inside a, an Amazon cloud. Okay, and It's going to be for, let's say, professional or huge studio later, maybe this year. Okay. So, for sure, we, are, we keep going or increasing the way or the capacity of the uh, overall platform. We know that actually the pain points, we know exactly where are the pain points of the production. So you need more storage, you need play out, uh, you need more I.O., you need f more uh, system for editing, there is more format coming up. So we introduce um, this year what we call the end-to-end -end long up workflow. <laughs> what does it mean? It means a simpler way, this is only uh, the new format from Panasonic, Panasonic which is a uh, long up. Uh, we're talking about uh, long up. Uh, and then now you, you can do uh, everything in long up inside the Avid Media platform, meaning uh, you can add a server that can capture the long up, edit, playing back, and through the overall process of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, editing and uh, playing out. Okay, now well, this is done, let's say, for Panasonic well, in the first place, but it's going to be the same for uh, for sure for Sony. Okay, so we're working in a way of of uh, what we call the, uh, the the platform should be resolution independent. Maybe you have already heard that the fact that we do don't really care what is the format of the camera or the file. The purpose is really you be able to ingest and produce and play out without any interruption in the whole platform. Okay, so this is done for Panasonic, and it's going to be the same for Pan uh, for <coughs> Sony, I guess, or next former next year. We increasing also <coughs> the uh, regarding the news uh, workflow. Actually, uh, let's say we have uh, plenty of product for producing the news. Of sure, you, you maybe you already know iNews, which is a part of uh, Avid Portfolio. Uh, you already uh, Media Central UX, which is, let's say, the light wave clients for editing and doing some uh, new stuff. Uh, but now the journalist wants to be directly on the field, edit on the field, using his iPhone, putting some stuff from uh, Twitter, putting some stuff from Facebook, and uh, putting some stuff from uh, Dropbox or whatever. Okay. We 
inside, in fact, what, what you are looking right now is Media Central UX, new, uh, let's say, uh, interface. In fact, you have some new tabs. The beauty of the Media Central UX is the fact that you can create your own tabs, in fact. If you have the right connectivity toolkit, that right now you can give it, give it, uh, give, uh, give it for Mavid. And there is some new uh, tabs. One tab is called Assignment Desk. So this is just a tab for the journalist saying, uh, I need this kind of room, this kind of uh, cars, this kind of, of camera, just a, let's say a scheduler, a planning scheduler, okay? Just a way to organize the journalist, the room, the personnel, etc. Here you have access directly to the, uh, let's say, the rundown from the iNews, the subject, the video, and Twitter, Facebook, whatever. Inside the world, the same let's say apps inside uh, an iPad, an iPhone, or whatever, you can do directly uh, whatever you like to. You don't need to have, a, let's say, a, a huge media composer or a huge news cutter for doing your editing stuff as a journalist, which is also great, regard, great regarding the post-production side, is we're going to release maybe later this year a kind of logging tool. We have developing a logging tool for the golf channel, in fact, a special blogging tool is going to be a new, uh, let's say, uh, tabs for logging uh, everything. And uh, it has been developed, uh, let's say, um, in the first place for the golf channel, but it's going to be uh, the same for TV, reality, t uh, reality TV show, stuff like this. So it's going to be a new tab. Okay? So that's the. Uh, the new way of organizing or thinking the media central UX or what we call it the new story centric workflow. Well, uh, last year we integrated a new company called ORAD. <laughs> okay, ORAD is uh, really specialized inside the uh, uh, graphics market. Uh, they are doing some uh, augmented reality, which is great. Uh, some graphics for sure with Maestro, uh, some uh, studio display control also, display uh, control wall, sorry, and some, uh, let's say, uh, server, replay server, okay? So we are in the process right now of integrating all this kind of stuff inside the Avid Media Central platform for give you <coughs> more flexibility in the way of dealing with graphics. I mean, a better way for implementing some graphics inside maybe the edit suite or the media central UX, or better way to uh, directly play out from a, a server or ingesting directly. So it's going to be it's going to be some improvement regarding um, later this year. Okay, so that's just the new version of some product uh, uh, regarding o ORAD. Have it for designer. That's new uh, a new tool. Uh, before for designer, there were three design three D designer. So this is a uh, basically a tool for setting up all the graphics in the real in a studio set, for example. Uh, it's kind of uh, you can integrate some three uh, D object coming from Maya, or Photoshop, and something like this. Okay, just to set up all the graphics part, but. It's not really moving, so normally I've got some video, and that's great. Avid Sparks, it's really a product for, uh, I don't know the, uh, the, the English term of that, but uh, to put some, uh, let's say, loop uh, inside, an, um, inside a, uh, an action. For example, when you've got the field, the, the football field, and the player is kicking the, the ball, and it's passing the ball. You can draw some uh, some arrow to see the to see the the movement or where are the defense and stuff like this. So this is a new product. I'm not aware of this kind of stuff uh, right now. So because I'm more or less coming from the edit part and not the graphics part. But and Maestro, which is the uh, the the controller side of all the graphics. Uh, Maestro is designed for controlling, let's say, the playmaker or let's say the playout channel, and also controlling the uh, graphics uh, coming from the uh, coming from the, the graphic channel, in fact, and putting everything on the air, for sure. So 
that's it and for sure the biggest news was the release of the new uh, let's say Avid Share Storage Solution called Avid Nexus. Uh, maybe you are already uh, familiar with the Avid Isis uh, Share Storage System. Uh, we have been forced to change the Isis because some crazy people from Suds, I don't know, <laughs> chose this, this name for uh, Attack Paris, for example, anyway. So, and uh, as soon you send a mail in Avid uh, with Isis, uh, you've got a, a mail a mail back from the NSA saying, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> not <in the> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not me, it's not me. <laughs> anyway, so, so the Avid Nexus, the, the new range of the Avid Share Storage System, it's based really on, on the Avid ISIS uh, file system, in fact. But uh, there is some great uh, new changes, for sure. Uh, first, there is some uh, dynamic vir virtualization, meaning, uh, you can build your own um, Nexus by building some blocks. Uh, let's say that the common blocks are the media pack. A media pack is 10 uh, hard drive, 10 media drive, 2 tera or 6 tera. So you buy um, 20 terabytes or 60 terabytes media pack. And you can add 10 drive inside a chassis. So there is two chassis, the E2 for two units and the E4 for four units and you add media pack per media pack. Each media pack is de delivering sorry, 400, um, 400 megabytes per second. So as you increase the media pack, you increase your bandwidth. And uh, which is also brand new is the fact that the, uh, everything now is based on Linux, okay? And there is no such thing as a red protection based on hardware, everything is software base so you can add some three level of protection right now well let's say two level of protection uh one pair workspace so when you created a, a workspace you can select one disk protection meaning on 10 media on 10 hard drive or one media pack i can lose one drive okay it's kind of red five protection or you can say on one media pack or 10 drive i can lose two hard drive meaning it's a kind of red six protection, okay? Everything is based on software, meaning if you create your, your storage group, so one media pack, for example, create one big storage group, 10 drive, and after that you create some dynamic workspace and you create your own uh, protection or your own size of protection, one, pr one disk or two disk, okay? which is also great regarding the Nexus in the ability of adding some extra uh, controller or redundancy. Uh, you can add, for example, on the low level, you can add four uh, chassis, four media pack, okay? Then after that, you can also have on this uh, 24 clients connected. And if you need more, you can add 40 clients and regarding, you can go to up to 24 media packs if you like to and you can add some extra controller inside the chassis. Each chassis are connected using 10 gigabits to a uh, switch, 10 gigs. And you can add some extra controller if you like to have some redundancy, security, and stuff like this. But it's gonna be coming, the redundancy part and the security is coming, is coming later at the end of the year, okay? And uh, the cherry, uh, which is also great, the fact that the uh, Nexus has been qualified for, uh, for sure for other kind of application, any kind of application. Adobe has really working closely with Avid for qualifying Premiere and all the suite on the, uh, on the Avid Nexus. And the same for the Resolve and all the Blackmagic uh, software, which are also working. And uh, FCP, for example, it's still working on the Nexus. And it was really the, let's say, the new cool feature of the uh, uh, of the Avid Share storage system, in fact, every. And I've got, uh, we've got here a complete setup with the Avid Nexus and uh, also uh, some stuff uh, regarding uh, Media Composer. Let's say that we are at this NAB, we have, we have choose not to talk a lot of Media Composer or the uh, product range that you maybe already know because it's gonna be 
some news, but coming later this, let's say in June, in June, in fact. So there's going to be some uh, huge improvement in the next release of Media Composer, which is going to be released uh, in June. We are still in the same uh, way of developing or releasing our uh, product. We have uh, three major release per year. So Media Composer, we are we have released the Media Composer 8.5 version, uh, let's say in January. There's going to be a new release in January and a third release at the end of the year. But right now, the way that we are releasing the product like Media Composer or Pro Tools is that the fact that every month there is some new feature coming up because there is a new application, a new companion application, which is updating in background, in fact, the, the application, if you like to, for example, if you, if you need to also. Okay. So, sorry for the speed and sorry for my accent. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have understand quite a bit of stuff that we have released. Anyway, if you need uh, further explanation, uh, further explication, further stuff, I mean, uh, feel free to ask to me, to Jeffrey, or to our Route 6, uh, their friends, and their researchers. Any question? I can take anything from me. the media composer news coming yeah. out Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Any question like that? It's, I it's inside. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it file formats? Is it, we have just released on the 8.5 some new formats. Right. I mean the HDR stuff, which is really some new LUTs, and we have already released the, uh, um, the NXHR codec, which is already capable of doing 12 bits encoding. Let's say that there's going to be a new way of inputting media, which is going to be much simpler. <laughs> you can steal, <laughs> but the good news is you can still <laughs> put a VTR if you like to. No, no. There's going to be a new window called Source Browser, and it's inside the new this new window, you're going to be able to see directly the media, to double click, yeah, double click and select if you like to link or if you like to import. So this is the first way of dealing, a new way of dealing of, uh, let's say, putting media inside Media Composer, and further they're going to be the same for outputting, because we have a lot of work to do for outputting media. And if we are also in the process of increasing, let's say, the speed of the Media Composer, more, let's say, more power coming from the GPU, from the card, there is also a new menu inside Media Composer that you can adjust the memory that Media Composer is using for playing back the video. So if you have a system with 32 gigabytes, which is the norm, let's say, right now, uh, you can say that you want 12 gigabytes just for playing back. Okay, So it's going to be a much simpler way of dealing with 4K or 8K or 16K media, because right now, uh, I uh, still need some power hours for playing back this kind of media. Okay, and some other stuff that can. I really like to talk about it, but <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk <laughs> about it. Yeah, no. Is there, is there any plans to automate the output? <laughs> to automate? From the composer, like you can with. I don't mean it's fully automated, but you know, sort of like you can sort of import in the background. Yeah. Is there any, is there any plans to do that with the, the export? There's some plans, but. Yeah, okay. That's some plans. <laughs> Are you upgrading the thread limit on the cores? Sorry, could you Are repeat? Are you upgrading the threads on the cores, you know, multi-core oh, yeah. systems? Are you upgrading the thread limit so it can use more threads? Yeah, yeah. Cause we are in the process of rewriting the way that Media Composer is dealing between the CPU yeah. inside the, the, the computer and the GPU. Okay. okay. So there's going to be some changes. But this is more techni technical stuff, so. Okay, but the first thing was to be able to be, to do uh, better than HD. So for a bit, that was a big step because, uh, so it was last year, in fact. <laughs> so now we are dealing with 4K and maybe uh, whatever, you can do already 8K if you like to. 
But stay tuned. It's going to be... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but things uh, are coming re really, really fast right now inside the, uh, on the media composer side. How does uh, the interplay system work? How does that fit into? Well, good question. In fact, the way, um, one reason that we have not released Media Composer yet, or a new version Media Composer yet, is between we want to align, in fact, our world product line, like Interplay. So one Media Composer, next version will be released. There's going to be a new version of Interplay coming back. Okay, So that's a new version with, let's say, new feature or new codec coming back or coming inside Interplay. But we are in the process of qualifying the uh, the new format or the 4K inside the Interplay. Or okay, this is just a new version of Interplay. Just uh, actually, we are running on Interplay 3.5. The next version is 3.6, which is aligned with Media Composer 8.6. I don't. Know. Okay. There's going to be some new change, some big changes inside uh, also Interplay, but I don't remember everything. Yet. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks, Guy. Well, thank you. My pleasure.